So friends, because we always have to call them as we see them, today, not a great day for justice. Not for equal justice. Not with what happened in a courtroom in New York. Not with what happened in a courtroom here in D.C. Not a great day for justice. Let's talk about that. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, if you watch these Daily Justice Matters videos, and let me say, I am so thankful and appreciative and humbled by the fact that so many of you not only watch them, but you send me messages and comments and feedback. Many of you tell me that you watch them every day, that you find them useful. And my promise to you is I will never take that for granted, and I thank you. But if you watch these videos, you know that I am generally looking for the silver lining behind, you know, the the big dark orange cloud that has been hanging over our nation since 2016. You know, in the age of Trump, we have had to contend with so much lawlessness and indecency and prejudice and misogyny and yes, injustice, but I'm usually looking for the silver lining. It is usually there, but today it's kind of rough to find. Today is not a particularly good day for justice, in my opinion, not equal justice, not for the equal application of our nation's laws. But if you'll stick with me to the end of this video, it's going to be a a fairly short video, Um, there is at least a little pinpoint of light, of, of silver lining, you know, trying to push through the big dark orange cloud. So today we're going to talk about what happened in a courtroom in D.C. in Peter Navarro's case. We're going to talk about what happened in a courtroom in New York in Donald Trump's defamation case brought against him by E. Jean Carroll, and we're even going to throw some Steve Bannon into the mix, you know, just to bring things down even a little more. As always, let's start with the new reporting, this from The Hill. Headline, ex-Trump aide Peter Navarro sentenced to four months in prison over House January 6th probe. And I take slight exception with that headline, with the characterization that this was over the January 6th probe. It was actually over Peter Navarro committing two crimes of contempt of Congress by refusing to comply with lawfully issued congressional subpoenas. He chose to violate them. He chose to commit the crimes of contempt of Congress to try to hide, to try to bury the incriminating information and evidence he had about what Donald Trump had done to try to overturn the results of the presidential election. So that is really what this was over. I know the Hill can't fit all that in a headline. That article begins, Peter Navarro, a one-time advisor to former President Trump, was sentenced Thursday to four months in prison for refusing to comply with a congressional investigation into the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Navarro was convicted in September on two counts of contempt of Congress, one for failing to produce documents related to the probe and another for skipping his deposition. Prosecutors argued Thursday that Navarro showed utter disregard for the House Committee's probe and utter contempt for the rule of law. They asked the judge to impose a six-month prison term. Quote, the committee was investigating an attack on the very foundation of our democracy, Assistant U.S. Attorney John Crabb said. There could be no more serious investigation undertaken by Congress. The same sentence was recommended for Steve Bannon, 
a former White House advisor who was also convicted on two counts of contempt of Congress last year. A federal judge sentenced Bannon to four months in prison, the same term Navarro received. However, he, Bannon, has not yet served that time because the judge said he could remain free pending appeal. How nice for Steve Bannon. Convicted, sentenced to four months in prison, but feel free to go home. Enjoy yourself while you appeal your conviction, a conviction and a sentence that was handed down back in October of 2022. Oh, and Peter Navarro, today, after being sentenced to four months in prison, just like Steve Bannon, was not taken into custody. He gets to go home tonight as well. Let's head up to New York. Headline in the New York Times, Trump Carroll defamation trial, Trump briefly takes the stand. And that article begins, former President Donald Trump took the stand in his own defense on Thursday in the civil trial for E. Jean Carroll's defamation lawsuit against him. His testimony lasted less than five minutes. And let me set this up, friends. You may recall if you saw earlier videos about the E. Jean Carroll case that the presiding judge, Judge Kaplan, told the jury during jury selection, ladies and gentlemen, you must assume as a matter of fact for purposes of this trial that Donald Trump did sexually assault and defame Miss Carroll because that is what an earlier jury found after the first trial. You must assume that as a matter of fact. That is true. That happened. So when Donald Trump said he wanted to testify, Judge Kaplan put some ground rules in place. He issued some orders. He said, you may not testify that you didn't assault Miss Carroll. You may not testify that you didn't defame Miss Carroll. You may not testify that Miss Carroll was lying because she wasn't. An earlier jury concluded she wasn't, and I am prohibiting you from testifying about any of those matters. And with that, Donald Trump took the stand. The article continues. A lawyer for Mr. Trump, Elena Haba, asked the former president whether he stood by his remarks in which he called Miss Carroll a liar. Quote, 100% yes, Mr. Trump said. She said something I considered a false accusation. The judge struck that second statement and Ms. Haba asked Mr. Trump whether he intended to hurt Ms. Carroll. He said, no, quote, I just wanted to defend myself, my family, and frankly, the presidency, Mr. Trump added. With that, the defense quickly rested. So let's be clear, friends. Donald Trump was ordered, was directed, was instructed by the judge of what he may not say, what he was prohibited from saying. And Donald Trump took the stand and immediately said those things. And he wasn't sanctioned. He wasn't held accountable. He wasn't held in contempt, even though he showed nothing but contempt for the judge and the process. And the combination of Peter Navarro getting to go home after being sentenced to four months in prison and Donald Trump being able to violate the judge's order with absolute impunity was a little bit too much for me to take today. So I posted. Peter Navarro was sentenced to four months but was not taken into custody. Steve Bannon was sentenced to four months back in October 2022 and has not spent one day behind bars. Trump takes the stand today and immediately testifies in a way that violates the judge's order. No sanction. Justice. 
So friends, can I ask that question again? Justice? I mean, look at these three defendants, Navarro, Bannon, Trump. What do these three men have in common? I'll let you answer that question for yourselves. Now let's look at another defendant, a hypothetical defendant, maybe a young man of color who's charged with a relatively low level offense, um, purse snatching or selling a rock of crack. You know what generally happens after a trial, after a conviction, after a defendant is sentenced? The next thing that generally comes out of the judge's mouth is marshals, step him back, take him into custody. But not Navarro, not Bannon, not Donald Trump, who should be in pretrial detention because he's on release in four felony cases and he poses a danger to the community and the law provides if somebody is a defendant in a felony case and he poses a danger to the community, he is to be detained pending trial. Not Donald Trump. Justice is that the equal application of the laws of our nation. Now, don't get me wrong, friends. Donald Trump will go to trial. He will be convicted. He will be sentenced to prison, and I believe he will be incarcerated. Why? Well, because we have at least some justice warriors hard at work. We have some justice warriors who are fierce and fearless and aggressive and determined to apply the rule of law even to the ruling class criminals. You know, we have justice warriors like Jack Smith and Judge Tanya Chutkin, and I believe accountability will come for Donald Trump. But you know what? Justice shouldn't have to depend on just a handful of fierce, fearless, justice warriors. It should be applied equally across the spectrum to everyone, but it's not. But friends, I promised at the end we would have at least, if not a little bit of a silver lining, you know, at least a little bit of light trying to poke through the big, dark, orange cloud that is Donald Trump. Let's go back to the Navarro case for a moment. U.S. District Judge Amit Mehta said he would decide whether Navarro's sentence will be deferred after his counsel submits its arguments in writing. What does that mean? Well, it means after the judge sentenced Peter Navarro today, Mr. Green Bay Sweep himself, after he sentenced him to four months in prison, he told Peter he could go home no need to report to the Bureau of Prisons. We're not going to take you into custody, but rather I'm going to have your attorney submit a a pleading, uh, a written brief to argue whether you should or should not be forced to serve your sentence while your case is pending appeal. And friends, I know that people will say, well, white collar cases, white collar crimes are different. It's not that unusual for a white collar defendant to remain out and about at liberty while his appeal works its way through the system for years. That's not unusual. Well, yeah, that's the problem. The problem is we treat white collar criminals, I don't even like that term, we treat criminals who can bilk people out of hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. We treat those criminals who, you know, damage and victimize enormous swaths of the American people. We treat them differently. You know, they're white collar criminals. They use their words to commit their crimes, to defraud folks. They don't use a gun. So, you know, we're not going to rush to hold them accountable. Yet that's the problem, because the scope of the damage done by a young man who snatches a purse or sells a rock of crack 
and those are crimes that need to be addressed, no doubt about it. But the, but the amount of damage done by those kind of crimes versus the amount of damage done to we the people, right? Look at what Navarro and Bannon did. Look at what Trump has done. You know, these are democracy busting crimes these people committed. And yet because they didn't wield the gun, they're white collar criminals, essentially. We treat them differently. We treat them better than the relatively low level offenders. And that is dead wrong. That's something that can change. It's something that must change, but we have to be determined to change it. Because justice matters. So friends, thank you for bearing with me. You know, today may not have been a good day for justice, not for equal justice, but um, tomorrow's another day and we fight on. Please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.